That's face for this. We'll have to wait. We have, we're, they're rolling, so we have to. They're rolling right now. Yeah, there's, this episode will take a couple more seconds mm -hmm. because we've got to be very quiet. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Which, if, you'll, if you listen really good, you'll hear action. Yeah, right. Here, look, look, show, we'll show you. They're, they're shooting over there. Let's see if. Cool. So we're actually on set right now for episode three and a half, four, three and a half, four, three and a half. I four. Mean, it depends on how. Yeah. How you break down. We we got some questions based on our uh, our responses on the last one, so we thought we'd answer some of them. Yeah. Uh, the you got one, which was what are we shooting on? Um, I'm yeah. using an iPod Touch and a selfie stick That's because right. it is the poor man's steady cam. That's right. That's it's right. The people who are are acting in this movie and the people who are making the movie are the same. Are the same it's human the same being, same. right? Absolutely. Guys. And if I need to, I can put it further away. Yeah, like right. way like over that. there. Yeah, like that. And then look, I'm not holding anything. Right. <laughs> and now, but wait, who's holding it? Nobody knows. I don't know. It's, it's weird. Like, it's weird. <laughs> Terrible. Anyways, okay, so. Um, the question we got specifically that we were going to answer on this one was, how do you uh, break down the funny parts of the script? Is it scene by scene? Is it line by line? Uh, do you wait and hope there's magic? Do you uh, is it instinctual? Yes, it is. Right. Um, you go first. Uh, I, you know, we'll take. Well, I think it was Jeremy really Ken Jackson. Everybody. That's right, Jeremy Ken Jackson. J.K. J K Jackson twenty two mm -hmm. on Twitter. That's right. Put that right. That's right. Here ish. Mm -hmm. From this area. Yeah. JK Jackson 22 yeah. on Twitter. Okay. okay. Um, so, anyway, uh, when I came on the show, it was really interesting because uh, you guys have been rolling for a year mm -hmm. and a half or so. We already so had a vibe. It was a real vibe, a rhythm, and a style that right. was happening on set. And so, what I did before I arrived, once I got the role through you know, auditioning and callbacks and things like that, is uh, I started watching the show, mm -hmm. getting a feel for what you guys were doing, the stylistic, you know, what kind of comedy you guys were doing. Was it big and broad? Was it more right. realistic and contained? And I would say this show's kind of somewhere in between. You know? mm -hmm. um, it keeps in mind, you know, the audience that mm -hmm. that uh, is watching at home, while at the same time not, not pushing too far. Right. And your reaction when you saw the show was that it's funny and you're, you know, like we talked about that in the last one, was that yeah. it, it's not like a reach. You weren't going to have to no. go in and do a bunch of aw shucks acting. Exactly. And, right. and so for me, it's really... So that thought they're gonna roll again. We'll be back. Okay, we're back. We're back. Yeah, we had to take a break because they were yeah, actually shooting. They were doing some stuff. Actually shooting. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you came in. There was already a vibe. Mm -hmm. I got here and there was no vibe yet. Um, if there was a vibe as far as how the show would go, as far as the comedy, it was the other Disney shows, yeah. which our execs, Chris and Brian, were really trying not to emulate. They were trying to make their show. A, more grown up, and by exact, you mean the creators of the show. Too. Yes, so those of you guys that exactly. Don't know what that is. Yeah, Chris and Brian, uh, who you can follow on Twitter too. I'll put their uh, Twitter feed right down here or yes, whatever. Sir, yeah. If you're a Lab Rats fan, you already do because they're the ones who clip, you know, sent out the clips and the early yeah. uh, <laughs> information on when the episodes are coming. Um, they really wanted it to be more of a grown up show, so. Um, it, they gave us a lot more leeway, and when I started reading the jokes, like I would read the jokes, they were down, you know. And uh, I like. It's interesting because I like. I believe acting is a little bit more like channeling mm -hmm. than it is like process. That you just get out of the way, and the spirit of whoever this person is kind of just muscles your soul out of the way and starts using your you body. No, that's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. So much of it for me, I think. Better, I kind of mentioned this in the first, in the second episode, mm -hmm. but. Uh, for me, it's all character driven. So yeah. I, don't, I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about the jokes per se or yeah. the rhythm of it. It just kind of, that part kind of happens so long as you understand who it is you're playing. Yeah. You know I mean, how, and how they the, relate to the other characters. The on cliche, stage, yeah, you know? and the cliche of the actor going, um, hey, that's my hat. Hey, that's my hat. Hey, that's my hat. That like, where you're <laughs> trying to find which word, almost like a. It, it almost gives it this vibe like a, um, people would imagine Mozart sitting there trying to come up with a melody right. and just playing, nah, nah, no, 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 how about a B-flat, how about a C? And there was no way that he wrote music like that. He would just play stuff out, and then when it happened, he'd know instinctually what he had as far as his repertoire, and he would go, oh, this works really well there. Yeah. And occasionally, 
you'll come up with your beat, your idea, you know, and all that kind of stuff that just instinctually comes. And what you get from your fellow actor is different or not there at all. Yeah. I, I find that different is great, not there at all is great. Contradictory is difficult because yeah, if, right. they, if, if they're doing something that it doesn't fit the scene, um, it's harder to. You can't shoot on something that does fit the scene in. It has to either be worked out or you have to ignore it, which is the hardest work of being actor. They're going to start acting. They start acting again. We'll be back in a second. So, we're back. We're back again. They stopped acting long enough for us to start talking again. Start talking about it. Um, yeah, that sometimes. Uh, it, you do have to rethink the beat and the read almost word for word mm -hmm. when your fellow actor is either locked into a performance that they can't adapt mm -hmm. or won't. Mm -hmm. That's always a possibility. And when it's a comedic beat, it becomes really important. Yeah, that's true. Because they're doing some quiet and you do something loud, it's not necessarily going to make it funnier just because yeah. it may have been funny on its own, but now it's got to be funny in context. That's right. And I think, I think you bring up a great point for actors, young actors who might be out there watching is I think the most important thing you can bring to a set or a stage is flexibility. Right. You know, you, you, you're going to practice what you're doing at home and come up with an interpretation, but you've got to be open for what everybody else is giving The you. reality of the circumstances. Yeah. Got to um, be willing to play. Right? We're going to have to cut off. This will be the, the last little beat. Jeremy Kent Jackson, we just want to answer your questions. Uh, will there be more to come? Uh, subscribe, and I'll put his Twitter feed and all that kind of stuff. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.